Good morning and welcome to our webinar today focusing on the Apprenticeship NC program uh, hosted by the Economic Development Partnership of North Carolina in conjunction with the North Carolina Community College System. My name is James Wolf. I'm the existing industry expansion manager for EDPNC covering the Southeast Prosperity Zone. Um, and I'd like to welcome you today and also welcome our speakers. Uh, we have Dale Yarborough with the North Carolina Community College System, uh, Denise Chalupski with Watson Electric Construction Company, Melinda Boyd with Franklin Baking, and Rodney Burrow with Jackson and Sons HVAC uh, Service. So a quick um, information about me. My role with EDPNC is to support existing industry in southeastern North Carolina. Um, and my job is to help companies access resources from the state to help the companies grow and be successful. Uh, that can be programs from the North Carolina Department of Commerce, North Carolina Community College System, NC Works, um, or NC State Industrial Extension Service. And it's also tapping into resources from DOT and DEQ and any other um, branch of state government that can be of assistance. So I'm really uh, local companies liaison to all the different branches of state government. I can be a resource to you uh, with anything that you have going on, opportunities for growth or challenges that you might have. Um, I, I ask you to reach out to me and, and I'll do everything I can to be of assistance. Um, a little bit about EDPNC. We are a nonprofit that contracts with the North Carolina Department of Commerce to provide economic development services for the state. In, ex in addition to existing industry support, uh, which I do, we also do recruiting of new industry to North Carolina. We have an international trade division that helps North Carolina companies reach foreign markets and expand their sales globally. Uh, we also handle all of the Visit North Carolina tourism for the state. And we have a small business center that helps small businesses and entrepreneurs get started and grow their small business. So EDPNC is a great resource um, across the state for businesses and companies to grow and thrive in North Carolina. So to get started with our apprenticeship, um, I'll turn it over to Dale Yarbo with the North Carolina Community College. Thank you, James. <clears throat> Again, uh, my name is Dale Yarbrough. I'm with Apprenticeship NC. Um, I've been with the state for about 22 years. First three years, I've worked with the Department of Labor, um, Wage and Hour Division as an investigator. Uh, for almost 19 years, I've been with Apprenticeship NC as a VA specialist and a uh, consultant and now as a supervisor. Uh, the agency was originally housed in North Carolina Department of Labor, and we were moved to the Department of Commerce, and now we're with the North Carolina Community College System. So <clears throat> with that being said, I'm going to share with you um, a quick presentation, kind of a, uh, a, uh, a, a brief overview of what apprenticeship is all about. Okay, so uh, please bear with me. Um, I'll, I'll be brief. And um, I just want to talk about registered apprenticeship, uh, pre-apprenticeship, and some of the funding opportunities that are available through Apprenticeship NC. So uh, currently, uh, there are two field supervisors, myself and uh, Eric Tillman. He's in the West, I'm in the East. And we have 13 consultants uh, that are assigned to the eight economic regions that cover the 100 counties in North Carolina. And so uh, with that being said, uh, let's uh, talk about how apprenticeship is affecting and, and helping the different communities and, and the different folks, employers out there in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the different regions. Okay. So um, why consider apprenticeship? First of all, um, you wanna build a competitive workforce. Right now you have employers um, across the nation, across North Carolina, uh, they have job vacancies, they have openings, but they're having some trouble um, at times with uh, filling those vacancies uh, uh, with the right people. 
So what they're doing is they're reaching out to high schools, uh, community colleges, um, universities, uh, career centers, and, and they're trying to find that talent and develop that talent in-house uh, with registered apprenticeship programs. <clears throat> registered apprenticeship, it is a time-tested model. Uh, some people think it's some type of mystery. Some think it's some kind of a secret. It's been around for centuries. Um, there's no secret. There's no mystery. Um, it's basically a, uh, a way of developing talent. Um, it's a way of um, you know, creating a, a workforce based on the unique needs of that company. Uh, registered apprenticeship is also very adaptable. Um, it's it's flexible in the sense that each employer, they take uh, uh, that training that they offer and they develop it based on their unique needs. And based on that training, it, it becomes like a living document. That training plan becomes a living document. That, that, that training can be revised at any time throughout uh, the program's existence. Um, there have been uh, uh, return on investment studies done to show that every dollar that was invested by the sponsor, they got a return on investment with at least a dollar forty-seven or higher uh, when um, you know creating these programs and using these programs. A few basic facts um, designed by industry to meet employer needs. Basically, uh, the, the term and the length of, of the actual training program is determined by industry, but the different federal and state guidelines are set by the U.S. Department of Labor and in North Carolina, the, the state of North Carolina's um, legislators. There's over a thousand occupations and it continues to grow on a, on a monthly, yearly basis. And, and that's the good thing. Uh, new occupations are out there being developed by industry sectors. Um, and in turn, those employers are using those templates that are developed uh, to help them start these new programs. Um, as far as programs goes, over a thousand programs that uh, fall into registered apprenticeship, master craftsman's, um, on-the-job learning, and pre-apprenticeship programs. And you have to be at least 16 years of age or older. There is no maximum age uh, for apprenticeship. So um, all those folks out there that are, you know, thinking about retiring um, or, you know, they, they feel like um, they're too old, uh, you can never say that you're too old to be an apprentice. So why why uh, why uh, uh, sponsor program or ways to sponsor program? So single single employers. If you are a single employer, whether you're a mom and pop type operation um, that hires one person, or you are a, a huge corporation and, and you're looking at uh, hiring or recruiting hundreds of employees, um, it, it doesn't matter. Um, independent independently run programs. Um, big or small, uh, there, there are no limitations. We, we don't have requirements on you, uh, whether you are big or small. The uh, multi-employer sponsored consortia, uh, when, you, when you think of consortia, uh, think about employers banding together for a common good. Uh, it can be uh, a couple of employers. It could be you know, 10, 20, 30 employers uh, that have a common need um, and basically across the, across the state, uh, there are different consortia that have been uh, uh, formed. Uh, you have Apprenticeship 2000, you have uh, uh, North Carolina Triangle Apprenticeship Program, NCTAP, you have the Gifford Apprenticeship Partners. Um, all these different consortia, um, they have a need um, and they have goals and they work together to go out and recruit high school students or folks from the community college. Um, they use the, the colleges to support them uh, for the related education piece. So it, it helps them um, to band together and, and work together so that those common needs and goals are met. The community college as a sponsor. Um, the community college uh, across the state, I think there are at least 38 or more community colleges that are current sponsors of registered apprenticeship. They pretty much, they, they do a lot of the, the heavy lifting. They do a lot of the administrative support uh, some technical assistance for participating employers. Those employers are, are there to train those apprentices, 
uh, pay those apprentices and make sure that the related, edu related education is being adhered to. Um, and that sponsor, that college sponsor, uh, they are making sure that all aspects of the registered apprenticeship program is being adhered to as far as the, um, the records that need to be maintained. Uh, registering of apprentices, you know, completion of apprentices, uh, making sure that the certifications that are awarded are given to the apprentices. So those three different examples of, of, of ways to be a sponsor there. There, there are other uh, entities out there that can be sponsors, uh, such as workforce boards, um, uh, faith-based uh, 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 um, organizations, um, uh, staffing agencies. So there, there are a multitude of different uh, sponsors, or should I say entities, that can become sponsors of apprenticeship. So, the components of an apprenticeship program. Before, um, I think I mentioned that apprenticeship is employer driven. In order for this to work, uh, we have to have employers that are interested in taking the training that they have in place and developing that training um, and, and put it in a structured format uh, and basically registering that uh, program with the state of North Carolina, uh, Apprenticeship NC, uh, as well as the US Department of Labor. So structured on the job learning, uh, this first component basically is that hands-on experience that um, the, pro the program sponsor provides to that apprentice. That, that training can last anywhere from one year uh, to four years or, or sometimes longer, uh, but that's the, an opportunity for that uh, 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 sponsor to take those mentors, supervisors, uh, trainers uh, to use their expertise to help develop those young people or those individual adults that come into the program and, and make sure that uh, they gain the experience um, and skills that that employer is looking for um, for uh, a new apprenticeship um, enrollee. Uh, the job related education piece. So with, with, with this piece, every, every on the job training program has that related education piece to help those new apprentices understand the theory behind what they're doing out, out there in the field. So all those, all that classroom um, learning um, is associated with that occupation that has been registered with that employer. So those individual um, uh, sponsors, they can be the actual uh, entity that actually provides that related education piece, or it can be the community college and or it could be a third party source or it can be a combination of all three. It's up to that sponsor to determine how they will provide the related education piece and where that information will come from. So this last piece, uh, rewards for skills gained. So um, everyone that is part of the, uh, the apprenticeship program, um, you are an employee, uh, you are getting paid. As your experience and your skills grow, so um, so should your um, actual uh, pay that you receive. Uh, we call it a progressive wage scale. It's basically the more you learn, uh, the more you earn. So so just think about it. You know, people always want to to have that phrase, "Show me the money." So this is the "show me the money" piece of apprenticeship. As you get those skills, as you you really learn what you uh, need to learn. Um, that employer will, will pay your, your rate of pay will increase. But to wrap it all up, um, what, what you really are there for is to become trained, uh, become a professional, um, we call it journey worker or a fully skilled individual. And, and this is, um, uh, is, is what is received at the end of your training. You must complete all of your on the job training all of your classroom or related education uh, to be awarded uh, the uh, U.S. Department of Labor uh, certificate as well as the state uh, certificate. Basically, these two uh, uh, certifications identify you as a fully qualified uh, journey worker in the occupation that you were trained in uh, because you did get that hands-on experience that may have lasted anywhere from one year uh, to four years uh, to complete. So that's what these credentials are all about, um, you know, the hands-on work-based learning experience.
And then recap, uh, basically you see, you got the business involvement, you got employers that are out there uh, looking to develop training programs. Uh, you got the classroom instruction uh, that coincide with the on-the-job learning to make sure that you understand what you're doing um, on the job on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, you got the rewards for skills gains. You know, you, you, you're going to get paid. You're going to, um, your rate of pay will increase. Uh, your, your, your ultimate goal is to get that uh, a, a journey worker uh, rate of pay, which is identifying you as fully qualified. And then those nationally recognized credentials that are portable uh, across the U.N. Let's move on to a pre-apprenticeship. So what, what, is, what is a pre-apprenticeship? So, so basically, pre-apprenticeship, as you see here, um, is, is a way to enter into the workforce. It's a way for an employer to uh, assess you. Um, it's a way for that new apprentice or that new program enrollee to determine whether or not they like um, this occupation they may be training in. So when this individual is enrolled in a, in a pre-apprenticeship, uh, the pre-apprenticeship can consist of just related education, meaning uh, classroom time. Uh, they're taking classes at a, a local college or uh, online module or whatever. Um, or it could be just a work-based learning experience where that apprentice comes on, that, that individual employer puts them in, out in the field and they're getting that hands-on experience um, you know, for a certain length of time. Or it can be a combination of both. Uh, what we call quality pre-apprenticeships would involve a uh, related classroom education uh, component as well as a on-the-job training component. Uh, using those two to fully kind of inundate that individual into what this occupation is all about. So we want that individual to really get, you know, the full experience in, you know, the employers looking at how well they operate uh, in this uh, capacity, and they in turn will determine whether or not do I want to be a carpenter, or do I want to work at, in megatronics, or do, do I want to work in healthcare? So we're looking at an, an opportunity to have this kind of a courtship, uh, you know, kind of like I said, try it before you buy it, um, and in turn, uh, both sides can can identify whether or not, yeah, I, I want you. Uh, you know, become an employee of mine, or hey, yeah, I, I want to continue down this career path. Uh, we have uh, numerous career paths already developed with uh, North Carolina Department of Public Instruction um, that allows us to work with employers um, and, and develop these pre-apprenticeships based on these different career paths that have been, um, you know, identified. Uh, they can use those templates, so to speak, or, you know, they can determine, hey, yes, I want to build my pre-apprenticeship based on these different components and have this as part of it, related to education and or on-the-job training. Uh, minimum age to be a, a pre-apprentice um, is 16, but as with registered apprenticeship, it can be you can be 16 or any age. There, there is no cutoff. So um, you know, there's plenty of opportunity for you to hire anyone uh, 16 and older and start them out in a pre-apprenticeship program. So the benefits to the employer, uh, we kind of uh, already touched on, um, you know, some of that, you know, the, the, the overall is, you know, there's going to be higher quality in the work, um, you know, um, they will, they will, the sponsor is going to be able to have a higher retention rate. And in most cases, um, you know, there's just that overall, you know, loyalty from that individual because they see a direct career path for them. Um, this piece here reduce, reduces recruitment costs um, and handpicked talent to train and retain. When you grow your own, that, that's definitely a, a way of, of identifying and letting individuals know that, hey, yeah, this is the career path. This is the training that you will receive. And when those individuals identify with, hey, yes, this is a career versus a job, uh, there is a lot more loyalty uh, from those apprentices. The big one here, Aaron, while you learn, most uh, most most apprentices are happy to be receiving some type of pay uh, along with an education component. Um, I know that most parents are very happy to see that these apprentices uh, that are involved in these pre-apprenticeships, the registered apprenticeships, that they are are definitely on a career path. And um, you know, we have a lot of support from parents 
that are part of these different uh, consortiums that are out here. Um, they have been um, they have been uh, given the, the availability of going to see how these kids are working in these different um, uh, advanced manufacturing uh, plants um, and, and other um, uh, sponsors um, uh, uh, operations that are out there. So, registered apprenticeship, a win, win, win. So, for, for the industry, for the employer, definitely a win for the employer. They get to, um, you know, recruit and develop that talent that they're looking for. Um, they, they get to, um, you know, have people develop further into their company at, as far as leaders and supervisors. And um, the retention alone and, and, you know, developing this process. And, and these apprentices have been a part of something that, uh, you know, holds them to that company has been a, a, a big part for employers out there in the state of North Carolina as a whole. The apprentice, um, you know, they're, they're looking for careers. They're looking for an opportunity for education. In the state of North Carolina, any uh, young uh, uh, high school student that actually becomes a pre-apprentice or a registered apprentice before graduation has an opportunity to have their uh, tuition paid for based on uh, that uh, course of study being a part of that registered apprenticeship program. So it's a great opportunity for, for young people uh, that are looking to start a career right out of high school um, to put, keep some money in their pockets, to keep some money in their parents' pockets. So it, it's, been, it's been great um, over the years. <clears throat> and as far as the community goes, um, as you can see, you got a happy bunch of folks here. They've all been through apprenticeship. So um, they got big smiles in their faces, and um, that's just uh, you know you know the proof's in the pudding, right? Uh, they're happy. So um, trust me, it, it's, it's a it's a um, it's a training model that works. So we're going to move over and talk a little bit about uh, military talent. Um, I know employers out there they're they're loyal to our military. We have a very uh, large presence um, of military in the state. Uh, numerous Air Force, uh, well, numerous military installations across the state. Uh, we have a apprenticeship consultant that sits at Fort Bragg and she registers soldiers, um, you know, from week to week into registered apprenticeship programs. There's over 100 occupations that are identified uh, for the Fort Bragg program. Uh, there's also the, um, uh, the the military hospital on Fort Bragg, um, yeah, on Fort Bragg, that's also registered. You also have Skills Bridge. Uh, that program allows uh, separating uh, military to actually come and work um, for an employer as an apprentice, uh, you know, during their last six months of service, uh, which allows them to, you know, identify whether or not they want to go into a certain occupation or not. But also, while they're working for that employer, uh, the military is still actually providing their salaries for them. So there are a lot of opportunities here for employers across the state uh, to use uh, the different um, opportunities of recruiting military veterans from the different uh, military installations um, in the state. And if, if, if they're not taking advantage of it, they definitely need to contact us and we can um, definitely put you in touch with some of the uh, individuals at Fort Bragg and other, other installations so that you can look at uh, those military veterans as a, as a uh, pool of applicants for your potential jobs out there. Now that we have come to um, the funding opportunities, um, first and foremost, uh, we appreciate the, uh, the funds that the uh, General Assembly has awarded Apprenticeship NC. Um, they they um, provided $2 million towards marketing um, Apprenticeship NC and marketing apprenticeship. So that, that funding was uh, given to, um, as you can see, 50 colleges across uh, the state in tier one and tier two counties. Um, each college was given $40,000, and that money was to be used to uh, really market um, apprenticeship and hopefully um, encourage expansion of apprenticeship by having employers have a better understanding of, of what apprenticeship is all about um, in, their, in their local communities. It, it's, it's involvement with the community college as well as apprenticeship NC. And hopefully um, by 30 June, all of that money will be spent. I know that a large majority of it has been spent. And we're just waiting for the, the final outcome so that we can report and um, have a, a true count of all dollars being spent uh, for the marketing piece. 
let's see if we can get this video to play and then we'll kind of give you an idea of what some of the marketing that was used. Please let me know if um, you aren't able to hear or see this video. Businesses across North Carolina need skilled workers more than ever. Apprenticeships are proven programs that help employers of all sizes in all industries develop the talent they need, reduce turnover, increase loyalty, and lower recruitment costs. Apprentices get work-based experience, earn nationally recognized credentials, and even two- or four-year degrees. Work with Apprenticeship NC and your local community college to build a program to meet your needs. Start an apprenticeship program today at ApprenticeshipNC.com. Businesses across North Carolina need skilled workers more than ever. Apprenticeships develop talent. Okay, so that was just an example of uh, some of the marketing that was being done by some of the colleges out there. And, and um, I, uh, we have gotten a lot of uh, uh, leads generated from the marketing that has been done across the state from the colleges. So we really appreciate uh, the colleges, um, you know, input and influence in helping us with, um, you know, the funding that was provided by the um, General Assembly. Along with that, uh, we also got the $12 million uh, to help with um, providing uh, funds for small businesses in tier one and tier two counties. So uh, basically what we've been doing is, is really um, trying to promote um, apprenticeship in the rural areas. And uh, this, this funding has definitely helped us. So far, we have awarded a little bit over $8 million of the funds. Um, and the funding goes towards uh, what is that, 2000 for, for employers to train apprentices. And that, that $2,000 um, could go towards buying uniforms um tool belts safety equipment things like that uh the 2500 uh, uh for up to two years just for tuition books and fees uh that type of thing uh the 15 dollars up to uh, well 15 up to four, 15 dollars and up to 14 dollars uh for wage reimbursements i know that so far that has been a very big big part of um encouraging uh current sponsors um uh to uh, apply for uh, registration as an apprenticeship sponsor. But like I said before, we're, we're doing pretty good so far. Uh, we, we, we like to continue and, and, and do a little, little bit better um, and not just awarding the money, but the money being spent. So uh, we're in the process of, you know, just making sure that the money is being invoiced and the money is being spent um, properly based on the guidelines of the apprenticeship expansion funds. Along with the apprenticeship expansion funds, we also have the ABA grant uh, from the U.S. Department of Labor. Um, that's the Apprenticeship Building America grant. We got $4 million, um, and we're to um, award, uh, spend all that money by, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, June 30, 2026. So uh, we just really got started. We were in the process of, of uh, building our database so it could, could handle the ABA, the ABA grant funds um, along with the NC expansion funds, but um, so far, uh, we just really got started um, with identifying the criteria and awarding that money. And, and so far, not too much of it has been spent. I don't have a dollar amount, but it, it will be ongoing for the next um, four years. Um, right here, the apprenticeship go to serve 2,000 apprentices. Uh, we are definitely, you know, we're on track for the first year um, as far as, you know, new programs developed. Uh, new uh, registration of apprentices, um, all of the grant goals. So over the next four years, I don't think we'll have an issue with getting this money spent and reaching our goal of apprentices served. The uh, education assistance piece of this is for $2,000 per, per apprentice for tuition, books, and fees. Uh, this $2,000 employer incentive is a one-time incentive for each employer. And the supportive services, anyone making less than $15 an hour, uh, would qualify for the supportive services. This right here is a uh, map. It's a, um, a map of North Carolina and the economic regions um, and the consultants that are serving in those regions. Uh, like I stated before, we have 13 consultants, uh, two supervisors, our director um, should be, uh, I think we have filled the, the vice president economic development uh, should be coming on board next month. So um, we are still in, in the midst of hiring a couple of other folks to fill other positions. But otherwise, this is what the map looks like. 
Uh, you can go to our website. You can contact those individuals um, in those different regions um, if you have any questions or or any employers that are looking to um, you know want to learn more about apprenticeship. And we definitely appreciate the help of the um, community colleges that support us. Um, with their help, we have gained some great grounds over the past four years. Um, you know, we're, we're, you know, counting them to provide that support uh, for related education um, in the way of, you know, continuing education and our curriculum courses. Uh, you know, they have done well. Uh, the award coordinators at those colleges have been a great benefit to us <clears throat> to help with, um, you know, some technical assistance. Uh, providing support to the different um, sponsors out there. So we really appreciate all the help that the colleges have done, you know, in helping us to expand uh, registered apprenticeship. And with that being said, that draws my apprenticeship 101 to an end. And if there are any questions, hey, throw them at me. I'll try to answer anything you might have and try not to get too weedy about it. But thank you for, for uh, allowing me that time and just listen to what I had to say. So thanks a lot. Dale, thank you very much for presenting and, and for that information. I think the uh, apprenticeship program is a great way for companies to build their workforce and develop a pipeline uh, to provide employees for the future uh, that are skilled and fit into the company. Um, so thank you very much for that. Um, and Dale mentioned questions. I should say that there is a Q&A box on your dashboard. Um, if you have any questions for Dale or for our panelists as the webinar continues, just plug them into the Q&A. And at the end of the webinar, we'll have a few minutes that we can get to those. So um, at this point, we'll, we'll move on to our panelist discussion uh, with the, the first question being for each panelist to please introduce yourself uh, your, your organization, and what role you play to implement apprenticeships. Hi, good morning. My name is Denise Chalupsky. I am the apprenticeship program manager with Watson Electrical. Um, some of the duties that I do is I do most of the administrative tasks for our apprenticeship program. I um, support our in-house training um, team. And we also have an annual apprenticeship contest here at Watson Electrical, um, and I help with the scheduling and um, making sure that that goes on each year. My name is Melinda Boyd Shepard. I am the assistant HRBP at Franklin Baking Company, which is a subsidiary of Flowers Foods. Um, I'm basically the middleman um, between the apprentices and the employees. Um, at, uh, at Wayne Community College here, um, local to Goldsboro, North Carolina. Um, I con I'm in direct contact with Christy Sauls, um, who's over our apprenticeship program um, at Wayne Community College. Um, so I help encourage, recruit, um, and implement the apprenticeship program here at the bakery. And I'm Rodney Bro with Jackson Sons Heating and Air. I am the safety and training coordinator. Uh, we currently have 60 employees um, and also advise and create material for our sister, uh, 27 companies. Okay, thank you. And then for each of you, uh, what does the apprenticeship currently look like in your organization? So here at Watson Electrical, our apprenticeship program has existed for, I think, somewhere between 65 and 70 years um, with our company. We have a registered pre-apprenticeship program, we have an apprenticeship program, and we also have a master craftsman um, electrical program as well. Um, we've currently got, I believe, about 50 registered apprentices. Um, that's about uh, where we run normally. That's out of, um, I think, close to 450 employees, 450, 500 employees. Um, we have our own in-house training program that we do our own in-house on-the-job training as well as our um, related training um, is all done in here in the house here at Watson Electrical. We use the NCCER guidelines and curricula for that training. Um, it's a four-year program here at Watson and 8,000 8, hours of on-the-job training 
and about 672 hours of related training that the um, apprentices participate in. Um, our apprenticeship program um, started about, about four years ago, um, and it is mainly within our engineering department, so the industrial maintenance program. We currently have three apprentices within that program, um, two being looking to graduate within the year, and then we have one that is actually our most recent. He is actually considered a youth apprentice. Um, and then we are also looking to starting an OMT, so an operations management apprenticeship program in the fall um, in August. And that'll be under our production department. So we were actually pretty new. Um, we've only been to apprenticeship for four months now. We started in February and we have four uh, employees in the um, apprenticeship and they range from one to three years with the company and currently they are attending uh, Wayne Community one day a week and outside of that they're work-based learning here on site. Okay. Uh, what are some of the benefits that you would like to share with us um, about the apprenticeship program that you've seen? Uh, some of the benefits that I've seen here at Watson Electrical, um, it just makes you more attractive, um, a more attractive employer when you're recruiting new hires, um, particularly in the skills, trades, um, industries. Finding employees at this point has been, been extremely difficult. Um, so I think in developing those relationships with high schools and some of the other um, networks into getting people straight out of college or even with our pre-apprenticeship program while they're still in college and letting them know that there are other opportunities out there um, rather than a four-year college degree where they can go in and get some on-hand on, um, hand training as well as not having that um, huge amounts of college debt that we're seeing from, from many of our college um, graduates. Uh, makes it more attractive to um, veterans. Their VA has many benefits, um, financial benefits, for their um, for their veterans to go into an apprenticeship program where they can get some additional money, um, basic basic housing allowances for participating in um, an apprenticeship program. Um, they get on the on the job training. So our apprentices advance. We've got some. Um, eight different periods that they can advance through. So every six months, they're not only getting that progressive um, financial benefit um, and for each six months or each six months, but they're also advancing in their career. So they are a journey worker when they complete um, the, the apprenticeship program. Uh, it increases the retention. Um, our CEO was an apprentice years and years ago with Watson Electrical and most of our top executive staff is or have gone through the apprenticeship programs as well. So it definitely increases retention. Um, we've benefited from the expansion grant that Dale mentioned too. Um, that has been a huge benefit to us as well. Um, we're also registered apprentices in uh, Virginia and South Carolina, and they have some additional tax benefits for the companies that participate in apprenticeships as well. I'll kind of piggyback off of um, Denise's point with um, when you think about retention, you know, what keeps employees um, at your company is when you when they know that you care about them and that you care enough to invest in their future. Because when especially when you're in a rural area, um, you've got to think about you're not just investing in the employee, you're investing in the excuse me, you're investing in their livelihoods, their family, you know, and their career. So, I mean, it, the saying is true that people remember how um, how you make them feel. So um, the apprentices here that we have, they also promote the apprenticeship program. I can't tell you how many, um, how many times I've had people from our engineering department come up and ask me about the apprenticeship program because they've heard it from the two apprentices that we have within that program. Yeah, so we've only been part of the four months, um, but our culture has changed. Um, we're not sitting down having a conversation. We're having a three-year conversation with our employees, um, and they see that investment. Um, not only their culture, um, the current employees that we have in there and in the apprenticeship is their mindset has changed. They're kind of taking more of a leadership. They understand that we're investing in them, and they're um, giving us return on investment. They're investing in us as well. So what would you tell other employers 
that are hesitant about setting up an apprenticeship program? Once your program is set up, it's a little bit of work in the beginning getting that apprenticeship program. You're coming up with your work processes um, and, and defining what your apprenticeship actually looks like. Um, once you get that legwork done out of in the beginning, um, it really is an easy process. It's an easy process getting your apprentices enrolled with Apprenticeship North Carolina um, and getting them trained. The, one of the big benefits of, of having an apprenticeship program is you're training them to do their work the way that your company wants it to be done. Um, you're not getting someone who's got years and years and years of experience who says, you know what, this is the way I've always done it. Um, you're actually able to train them in the way that your company wants, wants them to do their work. Um, get out there and network, um, particularly with the high schools. It's a great recruiting tool. Um, get those young, young students interested in an apprenticeship program and, and get them while, while they're young. Um, again, it's a great recruiting tool. Our, our recruiting department here at Watson Electrical um, really does push that apprenticeship program and the benefits of it. Um, um, I strongly advise and have an apprenticeship program and increasing your profitability, your productivity, um, and your and your employees satisfaction and, and retention as well. I would say think about your current workforce. Um, now think about your workforce 10 years down the road. Um, what looks different? I know personally speaking in in our engineering department, um, we have about half of them will be retiring within the next five to 10 years. So we need to have um, those skilled workers to replace them, especially in the area of North Carolina that we're in. Um, apprenticeships only benefit us. And if you're still hesitant, I can't um, encourage enough, get in contact with your local community college because our programs here, um, at Franklin Baking would not be where they are today without Christy Saul's our contact at Wayne Community College. Um, just give her a little shout out because um, ours has skyrocketed because of her. Yeah, and I'll piggyback off Melinda. I told Christy every reason why we couldn't and she told me every reason why we could. So she works with our schedule. Um, you know, I was really, you know, I was just curious. I mean, I was a lot to go into apprenticeship but when you partner up with a community college um and you build that bridge it makes it so much easier and i was told a to quote um that i like share um today is the opportunity to build the tomorrow you want um so that kind of stuck with me and it just kind of reinforced our decision to go with apprenticeships ronnie i think this is a a good question for you since your apprenticeship program is so new but what are some of the challenges that you guys encounter when setting up your program? So really, truly, the, the only challenge was, is how are we going to do this? What makes it going to work? You know, we were busy during the summertime. We're busy when it's cold. And Wayne Community has been able to accommodate our schedule um, as far as our work hours. Uh, we've actually had four technician in, so we're actually going to cross-train them. Um, the logistics was was a worrisome for us but um again Wayne community and the apprenticeship they've made everything simplified and it's it was a no-brainer so the hardest part was jumping in the easiest part is since we've been in there um, it has really um, is great the benefits right i think uh, this is a great time to reiterate that the state of north carolina has a lot of resources out there for existing companies and a lot of great people that will do whatever it takes to help you grow and find the best fit and program for you, whether that's EDPNC, the local community colleges, NC Works for hiring folks. So um, I think if nothing else, aside from taking away the benefits and how to get into the apprenticeship program, I hope you take away today that, that we're here to help and don't hesitate to call us no matter what question or situation you might be in, whether it's me at EDPNC, you know, Dale or somebody else at the community college system, you know, that's what we're here for. So, so you know, even if you don't know where to turn, you know, we can help guide you in the right direction. Um, so as we start to wrap up, I just want to, to remind everybody one more time of the Q&A box. 
So if you have any questions that in your mind that have popped up, you know, go on and type those in and we'll try to get to them before the end of the webinar. Um, moving on, I just ask for the panelists to share any success stories that really stick out in your mind that you've had within your organization. Um, I'll go first, I guess. Um, a couple of one, a couple of success stories that stand out to me is, like I said, our apprenticeship program has been registered um, about seventy years. We've got a gentleman that will be retiring here in July. He's been with Watson Electrical for fifty-five years. Um, he came into our apprenticeship program straight out of Vietnam. Um, he's been with the company, you know, in in various roles. He's now um, he's now a training. Um, manager for our apprentices. He trains them to go to the national contest with NCC. Um, he also helps with getting our apprentices. We participate in the North Carolina State Fair. He helps to get them trained. He, um, Lloyd Evans, Dale, you may know him. Um, um, he's been around for years and years. Um, he's one of our greatest success stories, as well as Craig Myers, who is our CEO for Watson Electrical. He also began um, his career with our apprenticeship program. So some great longevity there with our company who, who started off with as an apprentice. I would say, um, so two of our apprentices that are within the engineering program, one has actually been promoted to a supervisor job. Um, he started out as an hourly worker. Um, he, he gained so many skills not just technical skills, but management skills while in the program. And so he's now gone from an hourly to a salary job. Um, and then the second apprentice is actually being looked at um, for management as well, um, even before they graduate from the program. And both are supposed to graduate next May. So it's, it's definitely, I can't rave enough about apprenticeship programs because you will see growth within your company. So our four apprenticeship uh, apprentices, um, they've actually brought in six applicants that will be graduating from Lane Community this year, four of which we've already hired. So I did not realize that how much our technicians will market for us. Uh, and it, it's, it's contagious. They see something, um, not to me, heating and air companies are doing this, not to me, companies are doing it. And people recognize the investment that we're making in our community. And they just want to be a part of it. Well, those, those are all great success stories. And I think one of the things Dale mentioned in his presentation was that the apprenticeship program instills loyalty in the employees. And, and I think it sounds like from their upward mobility in your companies, that's the case. But it seems like also it's a two way street that it's the companies are definitely loyal to those apprenticeship apprentices that take the time and put the effort in um, at an early stage. And I think it also shows the value of the education and training that, that goes along with the apprenticeship program. Um, so we're, we're wrapping up here. And I think um, the last thing is just whatever, anything else that the panelists, you know, would like to add that, that we didn't cover today that you guys feel is worthwhile and important. Well, Dale, is there anything else after hearing the panelists that have come has come to mind to you that you, you'd like to add? Well, well, I, I do want to say that, you know, everything that they have shared, I, I think it's just, um, um, it, it, it just contributes to or relates to what apprenticeship, that training model, this training model can do for a company um, and for its employees and for a community. I, I think that as a whole, um, Folks that may be on the fence, um, if they have not, you know, kind of dipped their foot in and really listened to what, uh, you know, this training model has to offer, uh, then they, they really need to look at what's going on within their company, what their company environment looks like, what their training look like, uh, what, what, what they're putting out um, as, a, as a product and, and how it's getting done. And, you know, apprenticeship's not for everyone. 
uh, but it, it can, you know, help meet the needs of a lot of uh, employers and whatever their goals are. And it's just a matter of taking that initial time that Denise mentioned that, hey, yes, it's going to be a little, uh, you know, hard work, but the hard work pays off. And, and that's what it's all about. If you're willing to invest in it, it will definitely make a, a, a bigger investment for you as a company if you take the time and use that training model that you put into play and not just put it up on the shelf and let it collect dust. Dale, just to wrap up one more time, if a company out there is interested in starting an apprenticeship program, can you go over again the best way for them to get started and who they need to contact? Sure. If you go to our website, uh, apprenticeshipnc.com, uh, click on contact us. Um, it will bring you to a page where all of our consultants are listed uh, by region and counties. Um, and it will allow you to, you know, you know, email us or call us. And in turn, you know, we'll set up time to meet with you and in person or virtually, whatever you prefer. And, you know, we'll get that program development started. Uh, by sitting down and explaining apprenticeship and addressing, asking questions to uh, hopefully find out what your needs are. Okay, great. Well, um, I'd like to thank Dale with the community college and all of our panelists for taking the time today. I think it's been extremely informative, not only on how the apprenticeship program works, but I think three great examples of how, is, how it is succeeding with local companies here in Eastern North Carolina. So um, I urge, if you're interested in the apprenticeship program, I certainly urge you to reach out to the contacts with the community college system. Um, and thank you guys again for taking time to be part of the webinar. And thank you for attending the webinar. Um, my name is James Wolf with the Economic Development Partnership of North Carolina. And uh, this concludes our webinar on Apprentice today. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you.